I recently picked up this Zeiss Econ Ecoflex camera at a local antique shop for $60. I worry that I might have overpaid, but it's... I'm glad I... I am kind of still glad I bought it. The seller was originally wanting $145 for it. I was able to talk them down to $60, so that's about as low as I felt like I could talk them down. Unfortunately, it has a very stiff focusing mechanism. And there was two other issues that I did not notice until I got it home. So it reeks of cigarette smoke. And so I can't even have it in my bedroom because it just smells horrible. So we're going to have to clean it up. And then I noticed the worst thing possible. Well, not really the worst thing possible, but something that you really don't want to see in a camera. There is fungus in the lenses. So we're going to have to do a lot of disassembly and isopropyl alcohol. But we can try, and I assume because of the age of this camera that, and plus the, the build quality, that it's most likely made to be taken apart. Just you need to know how to do it. So I'm going to be trying to be very careful with all of this. Now, thankfully, it does actually work, and so like the, the shutter does actually work and everything, and it's all really nice, and it, I mean... Yeah, it has all the parts and nothing really doesn't work too well. It just could work a little bit better. And the, the viewfinder is nice and bright. Look at that. So nice. So once I get this cleaned up, it'll probably be a nice camera. Maybe even fix some of this. How it's coming off. I think the same thing's happening up here too. I went ahead and ordered one of these kits. So I have any little fitting and bit that I need, so that's good. First thing I've seen these in was the iFixit kit, and it was a lot higher quality. And then these kind of came around and they're a lot cheaper, so I kind of go with the cheaper ones because I'll probably lose the parts eventually, but for this it's going to be very helpful to have all the little fittings that I might need for this. And then I'll have less of, a, less of a chance, or less likely to, to break anything or strip out any screws. Okay. Almost lost that screw. Perhaps you take the top off first. Oh, nice. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now that'll give me a chance to clean this. Because this has a lot of gunk on it. Whenever I look at the uh, viewfinder at least. So now that is a compartmentalized thing. So I can handle that later. Put the screws back. Look at all the junk on that mirror. Actually some of it might be fungus. I'm not sure. Well we're definitely going to clean that up too. Yeah, see, that's the fungus. You can see on the very back there. Looks like little, like, spider webs. Mm. Oh, there. You can really see it. Yeah. Ah. There's that right there. Ugh. I don't know if I want to get that far. Maybe this is not the right direction to go. Like, perhaps... I mean... Now let's focus on the lenses for now. I just don't feel comfortable taking apart that whole mechanism just yet. No, I lost it. Well, that's lost forever now. They're so darn tiny. Actually, you know, it's probably not lost forever because while I was looking for that one that I lost, I found roughly the same sized one, a little bigger, from the Argus. So I'll probably find it later on and I can always put it back on. I don't think it's too important, so that's good.
don't know. Well, that's pretty easy. So this one goes to what's 16 on the top, and then 3.5 on the bottom, and this one goes to it's what B on the top, and then 500 on the bottom. So that's how I can remember that. Comes out quite a bit. Hmm. Well, that's nice and easy there. This comes out. Oh no. Oof, no. This does not want to come off. So the only other option I can think of is that there must be screws underneath here. So let's see. Looks like that would be a no. I did not need to take that off. Oh, well. Well, I need to get a closer look into this so we can see what's there. No, no, no. Oh, that's electric. So I could use that for shutter. Interesting. Well, that is helpful. So this side didn't explode and shoot springs everywhere, so that's good. Let's open this back up and see if we can get this off. At least, actually, you know what? I ripped it in a place where you won't see it because this dial will be over it, so that's not so bad. not good. That could use some um, deoxidizing. Ugh. Looks like there's other problems. That didn't really help too much. This lens was on there pretty good. Took me a little bit to get it off. I think that if I 
rotate that, I might be able to get this off. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice. I already had it undone. Oh. Ooh. Getting into some dangerous territory here. Not like we aren't, weren't already, but... Oh, God. This is not where I want to be. I've decided to give up on getting the lenses out, or at least getting the last lens out. There's only one lens left. So this one last lens, it's only one lens, and I can get to this side, and I can get to the back side. So I could clean it if we clean this entire thing as a whole. My main worry is that I might leave some fungus behind. So, I think we should try something risky. We should try submerging this into chemicals to kill all of the bacteria and molds like that. Possibly even wash off the horrible smell. And then we can put it into my vacuum chamber and evaporate all the water and alcohol. This feels so wrong, but I think it's the only option. I spoke alcohol from last night. Ugh. Rest of the isopropyl alcohol. Some hydrogen peroxide. Oh, it is bubbling like crazy. Look at all the bubbles. I'm not sure if it's attacking the metal, but I'm not going to leave it in there too long. And now to help speed things along, I'm just going to wash all of this. Just everything is going to get washed. And then I can go back through and lubricate it once it's all done. So hopefully this can get rid of all that nasty smell. like your guys' opinion. Do you think eight minutes in that would be long enough? Because I, I, I left in there for like eight or nine minutes. Now we're getting our vacuum chamber, which is just a modified um, pressure cooker. It's nice and warm. Put the vacuum chamber on top. So while that's happening, I think we should clean this too, but I want to separate that, li that lens, that screen, because we can clean that separately. Oh, it's getting magnetized. Okay, so we have frosted side down, and then lens with the etching up top. So they sandwich together where this is flat and this is flat. And that has some junk on it so we can definitely clean that up. Yeah. So thankfully it appears that all this paint is not really affected by any of the stuff that I'm subjecting it to, so that's good. Just the junk that's on it is affected. Look at all that water vapor it's sucking out. It's quite a bit. And it's not too warm either, so that's good. And the oil's still mostly clear, so that's good too. Pretty soon that's going to turn really milky and it's going to go up a good, a good bit. And then I'll have to let some of it out. Oh, well, that's a good amount of vending there. And it's starting to tap, so that means it's... Or at least, I think that means that it's starting to get a little bit of water in there. Looks like this could use a little bit of oil, so... Not sure how much to put in, but we'll figure it out. Oh, 
Okay, I'm starting to get pretty pissed off at this whole thing. I tried unscrewing this, but I just ended up fracturing the entire piece and a bunch of metal flakes went inside. It's still not actually working and now it's all crunched up. I have just now got to the point where I realized that this is not going to go back together and I'm not going to enjoy filming with this because it was it was a waste of money. I should have never bought it. And who the fuck cares? So I found by removing these screws, I, I could also do it on the other side. Looks like I might be able to get it out. Finally. I just, I don't need shutters. I just, I just don't care about this wire. Not fucking time. Okay, so that was it. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I was wondering. Okay, so now we're down to this and I can finally actually clean this. So my problem is that there's just too much oil in here because I put a few drops on here and it just all went into the aperture and whatnot. So I'm going to once again be a little bit risky and try ethanol. This should do a good enough job of dissolving all the oil and getting out any contaminants. Oh, it's really smooth now. Okay, so this is pretty well hooked together. Oh, interesting. Now that is fascinating. So they're all half circles. <laughs> I'm going to go rinse these off and then we'll put it back together. So I took it apart a little bit more and I got it to here. That's pretty hard. My shaky hands are not going to help with this. That's for sure. Some of these have gone into the wrong holes. So that's unfortunate. Perfect. I'm very happy with that. I think for this one all I need to do is clean the little individual blades and 
any little bit of grease in here is okay because well a little bit of grease is okay it's probably not very much it's just it's very difficult to get the oil out of these so this is actually pretty easy unfortunately all of my tweezers are magnetic so I can't use tweezers in case you're wondering I was running into the problem of whenever I put this back together, these would no longer work. It, was, it would grind to a halt. What I found out was this plate was flipped upside down. I had it in backwards and these are offset. So the, the holes were in the wrong places. And what's supposed to happen is these pegs go into these holes. I mean, they don't really do anything, but that's just allows there to them to not rub against each other. But I had that wrong, and so they were rubbing against each other. That's what I wanted. My shutter problems are solved. You know, now that I think about it, I don't really know what this does or where it should be. Oh well. It should be slower. <gasps> oh my god! It's fixed. Oh my god. Oh, I think we're on the home stretch now. there and then these go on it I think one of the little aluminium washers the big lever which grabs under this little notch right here and then the copper and two more aluminium ones I think that's correct So before I put this back together, let's handle this um, gunk on here. So I kept that ethanol that I used. It has all that junk in it, but I can use it to clean still. I think some ball bearing grease or, let's see, disc drum brake grease will be good. And just a very, very small amount. I'm going to get it with my little, I'm not sure what this thing's called actually, 
the dentistry tool. Man, this thing's pretty grimy in there, in that little line right there. But there's almost no sense in cleaning it up too much because it's just going to be getting more grease in there. So I guess the focus always just is stiff. It's very strange. to fix this mirror so well actually we'll probably be making another mirror soon forgot to put this back together whoops for me. These screws right here really mess with my head because they're not at, um, they're not at 90 degrees to the plane. They're like a, like a couple of degrees off. Kind of weird. I'm going to go all the way up, and that'll be B. That for bulb. Perfect. Hmm, that seems a bit loose. I don't know how I feel about that. So before I had one of these little rings underneath the big copper washer. Let's try with all of them above now. Yep, that was the fix for that. So now this is nice and tight and really strong feeling. Oh, and I figured out the problem with this. So that little spring right there, I had it just flipped around the wrong way. It's supposed to bind up a little bit. And that's how you get the extra bit of movement. And that's whenever you switch over to, oh, let's see, either that's bulb or that's 500th of a second. Okay, finally back to where we were, but it was worth it to take it apart again because it works a lot better now. Good enough. Good enough. So we're almost done with this. We just need to get the lenses apart. So I finally ordered a tool I've been needing for a long, long time. Let's see. Oh, it actually fits. And it works. Definitely worth 20 bucks. So now I don't have to screw up things. Oh, this might actually be one big lens. Which in that case, I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe it off. Because I've already soaked it into that cleaning solution. I just, if, if, if there was a lens cavity between there, then I would open it up and do that. But I don't think there is. So 
So this ring goes thin, thin rim down, thick rim up. This one goes round side, top, flat side, bottom, and this definitely has some fungus on it. This goes thin rim top, big rim bottom. Oh, more lenses. This lens goes flat-ish side down, curved side top. This ring goes thin rim top, thick rim bottom. There's a lot of fungus on all this. I don't know if I want to have this open here. <laughs> and then this goes round side down, flat side top. So I've lined these up in order of them going in. Clean. Round side down. Round side up. Ah, perfect. It's nice to finally ditch all of the washcloths laying around everywhere for the delicate parts. Let me know what color do you think I should go for with the leatherette or whatever it's called. I might put that back on, but I might also go with maybe red. I wonder how gray would look. Like That might actually look kind of cool blue to purple yellow let me know what you guys think because i think that, that could be a pretty cool way to customize this even though i damaged the lens or sorry i damaged the the mirror it actually doesn't seem all that bad it still seems good enough for lining up the shots so i might not have to make a new mirror so let's recap did i fix the focus well, it's still pretty tough. It's still really hard to do, so I'm I might take it apart again and see what the problem is. Cause that's just really hard, man. Or maybe it's supposed to be like that. I don't know. Second problem, the reeking of cigarette smoke. It definitely does not smell like that now. It smells more like cleaning chemicals with a an ever so slight hint of cigarette smoke if you really get a good whiff. But it just smells like something that was washed, so it might be coming off of the, the cloth and whatnot. I think it came out really fine. I definitely can't really smell anything now. Before I could smell it several feet away, but now you can barely even smell it when you put your nose to it. And lastly, dealing with the fungus problem, because I am paranoid of letting fungus well, infect my other cameras, because... You know, I would hate to introduce something that would infect and ruin camera equipment. So I believe I have sufficiently killed all of the fungus living in here. And I'm going to be keeping it in a very cool, dry location. Probably the basement because we always have a dehumidifier running. It's always 50% 50, 50 humidity down here. However, I also have some really big silica, silica gel packets. And I might put this in a box with one of those to keep it super dry. And that way, no fungus will start growing again. It also just looks so much cleaner too. Like before there was grime and stuff all around here, but now it looks nice and new. Just gotta solve the problem with this and might do another video on that just to you know, I might put this back on because this stuff is okay. 
Yeah, it's okay. I'll probably put it back on. Because if I didn't, then I would probably lose, I would lose the back. Zeiss Econ made in Germany. That's pretty cool. Although I guess I could replace these with newer stuff and then just keep the back one. But that would look a little, a little bit weird. Well, this is probably going to be a pretty long video. I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.